So inside there is an Intel Xeon 3475X CPU. It's got 36 cores and at stock it pulls 400 watts from the socket. And you think that's a lot? Well, let's burst the bubble and see a CPU pull over 700 watts and then see if we can actually air cool the CPU with this Noctua cooler. And you might be surprised. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So let's set the scene here. As you can see right now, this this is the default profile. I've got the Intel XU open there. And then just to show you that we've got this CPU here as well. This is the 3475X. We've got uh, 36 core, 74 threads. So right now at stock settings, we are pulling 404 watts from the socket. And that's with the BIOS multi-core enhancement enabled. So it's actually pulling a little bit more than already um, what it's saying there. And then we're scoring roughly about 50, 51,000 points, as you can see there. And then another option what we, you can do with this CPU is a speed optimizer. You go there, you get, go optimize now. This is Intel speed optimizer. And after that, it, as you can see, it puts the cores from 3 gigahertz to 3.5 gigahertz, limits the power there a little bit. Let's go back to Cinebench. And then we're going to go hardware info. You can see that now we're pulling about 460, 400 and 50 watts something like that as you can see and let's have a look at the score look at 3.5 gigahertz and we just gained about 7,000 points so as you can see we gained between 10 to 15 percent multi-core performance just by one click but what you can also do is overclock this CN, right? I'm not a professional overclocker and I'm not using some special equipment here to do this, but just have a look at this one. I'm going to turn the speed optimizer off and then I have created this profile here. I'm going to apply these values and then I'll show you what has just happened. So now instead of all these go costs going to like 3 to 3.9 gigahertz, I've just added a ton here, right? The cores basically are gonna go 3.9 gigahertz all each. The core voltage offset is 0.05 volts. And then now, when we press play here now, let's watch this now. 580, 680, and we are pretty much almost 700 watts there, okay? As you can see, let's have a look at this. 65,000 points. And as you can see, we're not thermal throttling on this. We're pulling about 700 watts there from the socket. What did we reach here? Maximum 80 degrees. That's that's not a lot, is it? Now, we could go even more. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to crash, but let's try 4 gigahertz on all of these. Let's see if this is going to work. So we'll go back here, 65,000 points, right? Let's see what's going to happen now. 730. Look, all cores going 4 gigahertz here, as you can see. 60, almost 67,000 points. Now, just to put it in perspective, we're so close to the AMD Threadripper 5995WX, the 64 core Threadripper CPU score, which is about 70 to 71,000 points there. So we're getting very close to that. We put 736 watts. Just in perspective, I've got a 1000 watt power supply behind there. This is the Fantex Amp. 1000 watt power supply and we're pretty much running out of juice from that power supply 736 watts let me just see how much we can push it let's let's see if 4.1 is gonna go there as well okay we're thermal throttling now as you can see but we're pulling 774 watts that's absolutely ridiculous we still managed to put like 68,000 score there uh, but um, now we are actually thermally limited to this one okay so this cooler can pull a lot of wattage now let me pull this back a few notches here so we are back to like pulling 700 watts now and then let me run it for a few runs so we can see 
what's the actual temperatures, maximum temperatures. In the room right now, we have 26.8 degrees. And what's going on here is I've got two Fantex fans in the side there as well, as you can see. And they are, these are really cooling down the VRMs here because uh, I don't want that to be a bottleneck. Inside your case, you would have some kind of water, like airflow as well. Sorry, not water flow. So these are cooling this down and that's the AIO now. We're pulling 690 watts, something like that. Let's have a look. What's the maximum temperature for the next uh, five minutes or so? While it's doing that, let's talk about the cooler and why this is even possible. It is possible because of the IHS of the cooler. So what I have over here is the Noctua NHU14S, which is a very infamous cooler. But this is the um, LGA4677 socket compatible, right? We have the same cooler for the Threadripper, but right now we have this for now the Xeon as well. Ooh, okay, we're thermally throttling now. After 1.1 minutes, we are thermally, thermally throttling there at 700 watts there as well, as well. So as you can see, even the AIO is just because the liquid is so warm, it just heats up and there we go, we're thermally throttling there. Let's see how good is this air cooler then? So here's the cooler. It comes with two fans. They're the Noctua NFA15 uh, high speed fan versions. So basically one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes, and then it's gonna go like in a chimney layout. So it's gonna get the cool air and then push it out that side, kind of that direction. If you look at the heat plate, of this here, then you notice that this is massive. Noctua has already pre-applied the thermal paste, which we're gonna test. But if you look at this IHS coverage, compared to like an AIO coverage, which I have here. So this is a normal AIO. I think this is the Fantex Glacier 1. And then look at the size difference, right? This covers only a tiny little area, whereas this covers loads of it. Obviously the CPU is much bigger as well. So if you take the likes of the Threadripper CPU. So this is the 24 core 5965WX. You can see that this IHS is like completely covered with this cooler there. But if we look at this one, then you can see that this cooler would only cover like an area here, not the whole thing. And it's the same with the Xeon. Xeon is like very similar shape kind of IHS as this one. And that's why we can pull 700 watts from the CPU and we can still cool it down because the heat is actually spread out in the area. If we had the likes of 3900K or uh, AMD Ryzen CPUs, then you can easily see that these CPUs have much smaller IHSs. IHS? IHSs? I'll show you here. So this is the Threadripper CPU as you can see here. And then in comparison, this is the 13th gen, 13i9. Look how small this is. And then if we take like a Ryzen 9 7000 series CPU, then you can see that these CPUs are like, you can fit probably four of these together with one IHS. It's because there is one chip there that gets really, really hot. Whereas on the bigger ones, we have chips laid out kind of all over the place and the heats get spreaded. So the 13900K, if it pulls 300 watts, it doesn't matter how much, how big your IHS is, but the, all of the heat is concentrated into one small area, which means it's very hard to pull it out. But in here, we've got the heat spreaded in a much larger area, which means we can easily um, take it off. The interesting thing is once we have this overclocked, as you can see here right now, the idle is 190 watts. It's idling at 190 watts, okay? Now, as you can see, the temperature is not bad, 34 degrees. That's what you usually see in a other like normal mainstream CPUs when we pull 15, 20 watts, something like that. But 10 times more wattage pulled, that's ridiculous. So let's turn this guy off and then change the CPU cooler. Alrighty, we're back on. Interestingly, I have noticed that this Noctua cooler, it comes with a, a bit thicker rubber pads for the back of the fan, probably to get better airflow or just better cooling there. So these pads here are much thicker, as you can see from this angle, than these ones. Alrighty, so we are back at it now. So right now, as it looks like it's all on default, I believe. Yep, 
So this is default settings now. Let's have a look. Core clock speeds, two point something gigahertz, idling only 173 watts, as you can see, not a problem. Uh, core temperature is there, 38 degrees, something like that. So let's have a look what happens when we press go. This is so much quieter than the AIO. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but we're pulling 400 watts. And then what just happened? Um, okay, these, this is nice. The heatsink is getting warm. 51,000 points, so exactly the same as you can see, 58 degrees there. So um, let's see if we do the speed optimizer. So now we should be pulling roughly around 450 watts. 450 watts and we are at 61 degrees. 457 watts. Look at that, 57,000 points. It's no problem, it's air cooled. Air cooled, it's a single tower air cooler pulling 450 watts. Do you know how ridiculous this is? It's like twice, like adding two Intel 3900Ks or two Ryzen 9 7950X like underneath there and putting one heatsink on top to run two of these CPUs. That, that's, that's ridiculous, right? But we are not done yet. Let's have a look what happens if we are gonna put our 700 and something watts uh, on there. Profiles, I'm gonna do this one. So boom, now we're idling around 200 watts, as you can see, 3.9 gigahertz, all of the cores are just sitting there. And let's let's see what happens. Single run. 700 watts, 79 degrees. 88 degrees. Okay, this is quite mental so let me see if, if we do like a few runs because look at that this Noctua air cooler right now is pulling 710 watts and it runs fine okay we're just thermal throttled okay we are thermal throttling in let's have a look at which cores are the hot ones oh crashed no problem it's fine it happens whoa very warm Okay, so we're back online and looks like the the heat is not anticipated as much as on the Sion. Looks like it was crashing a little bit, so it doesn't like the the clock speeds there as much. So what we could do is I'm gonna go advanced tuning. We're at 3.9 right now. Core voltage offset. So we'll just turn these down like that. 3.8 now. And let's see. Oh, power limit throttling. Let's see how this goes now. 10 minutes, 650, 660 watts. 660 watts on an air cooler. And what we're running at, 7.8, 79, 80 watts. Let's have a look at a few runs. Let's see what happens. Yes, it is slightly thermally limiting there. When you feel the cooler, the cooler gets really, really hot. Like I had the same with the AIO. The AIO is now cooled down, but it reaches its kind of maximum capacity and uh, saturate, saturation. There we go. Again, Windows has crashed. Now, depending on the workload, right? You can have some Prime 95, for example, or like Fermark CPU burner or Cinebench R23, they all like use slightly different instructions and the, the heat kind of translates slightly differently. Sometimes I'm seeing less wattage pulled, but much higher temps. But still what I'm impressed about is that you don't actually need an AIO for a 450 watt CPU, for example. It runs it completely, completely fine. But in reality, yes, the AIO perhaps is better, uh, cooler, compared to the air cooler, which I think we already knew that, but in terms of quietness and still, if you are not overclocking, the air cooler is completely fine and we shouldn't underestimate the air coolers. Now this here without an overclock. Now, right now, as you can see, we're pulling 404 watts and the package temperature is 45, 50 degrees. Let me just see where this so you can see what's the maximum temperature. 56, 57, 62 degrees. Yeah, the cooler feels very, very hot, but it's fine. Look at that. 
This is uh, a minute and a half almost now. We're running there, being pulling 405 watts, and every run we're still maximum about 65 uh, degrees. So in here, 53,000 points at 400 watts. Now bear in mind, if we put this cool on the Threadripper, which is 280 watt TDP, we're running roughly around the same temperatures actually, which is interesting, but pulling 280 watts from the socket. So it actually depends on the CPU sockets and the chiplets as well. Go check out my 5995WX uh, Threadripper build, where we actually tested that on a Threadripper as well. And there you can see that we're pretty much the same temperatures but pulling almost half the wattage. Look at that, 61, can't get it past there. And it's 26 degrees here in this room, which is quite warm in the UK. I know somewhere in Australia it might not be. So then, what is the conclusion of this? Is the air cooling fine? Absolutely, and I think we should not underestimate the air cooling capabilities of the, especially Noctua coolers, just because they have really engineered them really, really well First of all, they're much quieter than some of the AIOs. Now, depending which AIO you are gonna go for and which fans you're gonna be using, but most of the time, most likely, it is quieter. Now, is it as good as an AIO that's meant for the Threadripper system? Um, not really. Obviously, this is the NMAX cooler that is absolutely massive and, you know, really is meant for this IHS. If we take the like, like mainstream, the small IHS coolers, then probably this is a not gonna be as good as this air cooler here. But if you look at the price point, then this AIO is actually twice as expensive. And if you're not overclocking the system, this Noctua cooler is a better option for you, in my opinion, just because you never have to worry about is my liquid okay? Is is something going wrong with... There's so many things that can go wrong much more with an AIO than this one. This one has a very, very long warranty as well. What is it? Five, six, seven years, something like that from Noctua? Maybe even more. Six year warranty. And believe me, there's nothing that can go wrong with the cooler. Maybe your fans go out. All you can do is just go on Amazon, buy new fans, and you're completely fine. So if you want to check out this cooler or this test bench setup or the CPU review, check it out in the video description below. Also, if you do want to build yourself best bank for a creator PC, then there's guides in the description below. They're completely free, just check them out. And I've put together some, you know, good options for you. There's four videos, whatever your pricing is, check them out. You'll find the best bank for a PC build for you down there. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.